Hello and welcome back to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez. And uh, this is episode 13. It's April 8th, 2020. And today's your lucky day because we're going to do another Let's Make Comics workshop session. So um, if you're a parent, an adult, or even an older sibling and you got kids or younger siblings or cousins or students, whatever, that you want to keep busy with a comic book project, I'm going to run through a, um, I don't want to say complete, because, you know, can you do that in the time I'm going to do it, but it's going to be a 20-minute comic clinic. So now i got to do it under 20 minutes, and I'll be good. But I'm going to go through a bunch of basics, and um, I think it should be just enough to get you started. I, I've been teaching now, I think, I don't know, 15, 16 years, and... Um, yeah, I've learned early on that kids sometimes, they, they're curious about making comics. They just need a few little pointers where to go. And um, they pretty much can get the ideas down on the paper and such. So um, be curious to hear, to hear what your experiences are in that regard. So this, these are a couple of uh, comics from uh, students probably about a year ago. I was teaching a summer class. It was like a 10-week class. So... Um, there was, a, there was middle school and high school uh, students, two different classes. But yeah, I, I had them do a four-page comic. Uh, this is a photocopy of the of their work. Of course, they keep the original art, and um, I make photocopies for them, and I always keep a copy just to have, you know, just to, over the years, just look back and see what type of student work we have. Um, so we're gonna do something similar, it's like this type of, you know, simple mini comic format. Um, if you saw a previous episode of mine, episode six, um, and at the end of this episode, I'll have a little button up here where you can click on it, and then you can watch that episode if you haven't or if you want to refresh. But I did uh, some squiggle doodle uh, character design exercises in that, and the second half of that video, I showed everybody how to um, at least prepare the mini this type of mini comic. Right, it's uh, where it's one sheet of paper, and it could be a smaller sheet of paper. This is 11 by 17, and um, you know, I by showing you how to fold it and where to cut it and fold it back in, um, you have that little eight-page booklet. So, like I said, check out uh, episode six afterwards for how to format that um, mini comic. But I'm gonna make some space here, and basically, let's get started. So let's do a 20-minute comic clinic and um let's see how it works for us right so let me uh hang on a second i need to set my timer because i want to do this under 20 minutes okay so here we go here's what you're going to need uh for this exercise um just right off the top real simple it's what i love about comics you know paper and Pencils and paper, so regular pencil. Uh, you can use this, you know, I'll say photocopy paper or printer paper, right? Everyone's got a, most everyone's got printer paper at home in the computer, if not any, any eight and a half by 11 sheet. It could be any size sheet, actually. So um, I'm gonna use the larger sheet. I'm gonna use the 11 by 17 just for the purpose of demonstrating, plus it is, there's more room. Not everybody has this size of paper at home, but you might have a different size, 12 by 18 or whatever, nine by 12. Um, the size doesn't really matter. In fact, most kids like drawing small anyway, so. But what they're gonna do is just get any sheet, and you know, a, a lighter colored sheet is better. Um, you know, obviously I'm gonna get a black sheet and then try to make black markings on it. <laughs> so lighter sheet and um, pencil is all you need to start off with, but you know, Students are always asking me for erasers. It's funny when I start a class and I give out the paper and pencil and there'll be one or two kids, hey, mister, can I have an eraser? And I'm like, why do you need an eraser? You haven't even drawn yet. Like, don't even, don't start going in assuming you're gonna like, you know, oh, I gotta erase, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna make mistakes, so. Um, but yeah, the eraser, if they want it. And um, rulers, you know, some kids are very precise. Or they, they want to be precise, so they they want rulers. So they uh, when they do their panel lines, right? They want them nice and perfect. So if they need a ruler, give them a ruler. Um, and of course, you know you can use 
colored markers afterwards to color it. Colored markers, uh, color pencils, crayons, you know, those glitter markers, like whatever, you know, if, if the the young artist wants to color the comic, then let them color the comic. Not a problem. Um, okay, so let's kind of get started here. Um, so one thing about comics, right? It's, um, let me use a thin pen here. Comics, because they don't have a, um, you know, most comics that I know don't have an audio chip. So how does someone you know, know what's going on in the comic. Well, it's uh, done with what they call word balloons. Some kids call them, uh, what, speech bubbles, speech balloon. It's not like it's a wrong answer. Um, I just tell the kids, yeah, that's those are fine. And traditionally, at least here in America, you know, American comic uh, industry, art form, they always call them word balloons. So I, there's kind of four basic types, you know, for the most part that you, you need for any story. One is just a simple... Someone is just talking. That's the one you see all the time in the comics. Here's a frog. Um, so I'm going to write the dialogue first. Sometimes I do the word balloon first on these demos and I don't have enough room inside. So, um, Oh, look, I was, I was thinking of something. Okay, I messed that up. It's supposed to be Pop-Tarts. How dare I think of art when I'm doing a comic? I want Pop-Tarts. Um, so the word balloon is literally like, you know, it's a balloon, it's a round circular enclosure, and then it's the pointer always goes to the character talking. Sometimes you can curve it, you can make it a straight line, you don't have to, it doesn't have to touch the character, it doesn't have to go in the character's mouth exactly like he's, you know, like it's literally coming out of his mouth, but as long as it points to him. Um, so that's the just the regular talking one. Now here's the, this is the one that most of my students over the years, and you know, I've had what hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students in all my classes. Um, this is the one that always kind of stumps them, but you always have once in a while you have someone who gets it right. So I want Pop Tarts, and she's whispering to him that you know they're all gone, but she's gonna whisper so the frog doesn't hear. But she must be afraid to hurt the frog's feelings or something. So how do you do a whisper word balloon? Some people maybe have blurted out the answer here, but it's um, it's, it's a very similar balloon to the talking one, but look, check this out. And most of this stuff was all created back in the early days of comic strips and comic books, like in the early 1900s. So basically, it's a it looks the same. It's a circle with a pointer. But it's a dotted line or a dashed line, at least in American comics. I think in manga, um, the kids sometimes tell me it's like a big word balloon and then like real tiny uh, words. Like they're so tiny you can't read. They're all gone. That's not bad either. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Because it's a, a much smaller um, sound. But I do like this one too because it's, you know, it's not the solid line. It's broken up. So... You're whispering. They're all gone. Um, now here's one. Like when a character is either like scre like uh, ex screaming, yelling, crying out in anguish. Uh, poor, <laughs> poor little taco here. So I'm going to write some dialogue. And no real tacos were hurt in the making of this comic. Actually, these should all be exclamation marks, right? Please don't eat me. Um, so these yelling, I always tell the kids, when someone yells, what is it like? Like an explosion, right? And this one they usually know. They say it's like jagged or spiky. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, I don't know who made up each one of these back in the day, but it's like we need to thank them, right? Because uh, they just seem... They just seem like the right way to do it. Or maybe because we've been doing it for 100 years, whatever. But please don't eat me, He's the poor little guy. Um, and then the last one here, uh, let's see. Maya's on her day off, relaxing. Um, 
Uh, let's see. What's something you think? So she's thinking this to herself. So nice out here. So when someone's thinking, and I think most of the kids usually get this one correct. They say it's like a cloud or bumpy. So yeah, it's a, uh, look at this. This is a thought balloon. And usually what happens, so it's like a cloud. And instead of a pointer, this is always interesting to me, I thought. So at least I've seen it this way a lot. The circle, the little circles, they get smaller. So it's like a pointer, but the little circles going to the person who's thinking. So we got talking, whispering, yelling or exclamation and a uh, thought balloon. So those are the four basic um, word balloons for comics. So when I do a comic, I usually make up the characters first. I, I just do character designs, like in my sketchbooks. I'll, I may have a design in there for months and months or even years. Um, but what I always tell, I always ask the kids in the classes, like what are the two things we need to tell a story? And the first thing they always yell out, is, oh, pencil and paper. I go, okay, what are the next two things? Or what are two things that you can't touch? They're not physical. And then they start thinking, and then inevitably someone will say character, and I'll go, yes, that's right. And then uh, the other one we usually hear is, the second one is, I'm always looking for, like, plot or story. So they say that, or they say the theme or the idea. So basically you need a plot or a story and then characters, right? Because... The characters have to en enact the plot, and then the characters need something to get them, you know, make them act out the story. So, uh, story and characters, or plot and characters. So, what I'm going to do is just really quickly. Thought I had all this ready here, but uh, just going to do some really quick characters. Like, if, check out that other video, episode uh, six you know, squiggle designs, but, if, you know, uh, most kids have no problem coming up with characters, um, and sometimes they say, they, they say they can't think of something, I go, well, think of food. Food is always something, you know, well, we all know what that is, and uh, we all have our favorites, and it's always fun to make food out of it, so, characters out of it, so, you know, here's one I've used a lot in my classes, Taco Dave, right, um, there was actually a guy knew years ago called Taco Dave, and one day I asked him, you know, well, how'd you get that name? And it's like this real convoluted story, and I already forgot why. It, I, I mean, you assume, right? Like, oh, he just liked tacos, and one day someone called him Taco Dave. But it seems like it was a more elaborate story, at least, that he told me at the time. So, you know, characters are real simple to make. They're a taco, and then you put the legs on it. Um, that's a hard shell taco for any taco snobs out there. It's not the nice rolled-up street tacos. But these are always fun to draw that, that, have, that have circle shape. Um, there's another character I've done in my classes. I mean, if they don't want to do food, and again, this is, they'll come up with their own characters, but if they need to help, um, well, how about, you know, how about like an eyeball or a hand or something, you know, like one part of the body, but just make that the whole character. So I've used her before too. Her name's Eileen. You may remember that song by uh, Dexie's Midnight Runners. Come on, Eileen. So, and she gets her on her skateboard. Um, what else do we got? I had some other ones that I was going to do. Oh, yes. This one I do all the time in my classes because it's so easy to draw. And sometimes, you know, some students want something simple they can just copy and, and do. So this is Moose Ghost. Most everybody, thankfully, still plays Pac-Man and they know Pac-Man. So here's the, the, the ghost figure is real easy. It's upside down you with some jagged lines on the bottom. Uh, and it's Musco, so this is the face and the big antlers on the uh, side there. Um, what else? And, you know, like back to the food theme. Let me do this one here. This one's uh, always fun to draw. Uh, cupcake. Right? We like cupcakes. So this is a cup cat. You know, basic shapes, triangle, and... Little tail there, so yeah, just have the um, have the artist design, you know, several characters for the comic, 
Um, you know, and some kids are going to be more a little advanced. And, um, you know, in my experience, a good portion of them are into, you know, Japanese uh, cartoons, anime, or uh, Japanese comics, manga. So I've seen my share of uh, Dragon Ball Z-inspired characters over the over the years. So, you know, if that's what they want to draw or create... And I always try to suggest that the, they create their own character, even if it's similar to an existing one, just so they get into the idea of trying to be a little creative with, like, you know, coming up with something. Again, that's up to you and them, and it's not like it has to be a character that they made up, but... So this is like a generic... This was like a hybrid of a, you know, anime character and maybe something you see on a Cartoon Network, I guess. But, you know... Just them design the characters. And um, however many they need for their story, could be three, four, could be one, whatever. But have them do on a separate sheet and then they'll have their character designs all, all set. So what we're gonna do next is, I guess I'm gonna run through doing a story so we've covered right the word balloons and you know how you can get them to uh, create their characters you know if you want to if they're older or just want to really um, push themselves you could have them what they what they call a little sheet of paper here da, da, da. Like they call turn around. They do this in animation. Turn arounds like, well, that's not exactly the front of him. That's kind of interesting because it's kind of, this is not the front of the character, but they would do like the front of the character and then the side of the character and then the back of the character. Like let's, let's look at Cupcat just for, we'll do it underneath it. Just for the sake of, uh, so if I want to draw her from the side view, it's basically, the, she's basically the same shape, right? She's got that curved top with the icing and then she's got her, this is the cup part. So, let's put the tail. Actually, the tail looks the same, too. And then one leg's behind the other. So here's where the only difference, I guess, would be we see just the side of her uh, face. So you only see one eye and then, like, half the nose and then half the mouth and then the whiskers here and then the ear here and maybe one behind there. But like I said, um, I don't usually have them do that. Because I, I teach a lot of grade school, middle school, and sometimes the middle school kids will, will do it. It's good to push them sometimes uh, creatively, but again, for the purpose of doing, you know, this quick little exercise, or at least you just get them started, um, you don't really need to do the turnarounds. But, okay, so like I said, you could use this small paper, you know, fold it in half. I'm going to use a, the larger one only because it's always easier to draw a little larger, plus for the purpose of the camera, you know, I think you'll see it better if I keep it, the image is large. So basically, you know, it's time to make the comic. So I'm gonna fold this in half. So I'm not doing the, this mini comic for, for this exercise, but I could, I could use, you know, do this, set it up like this and then do it. But like I showed you earlier with these ones from my students, they actually use, you know, 11 by 17 paper. And they, you see they get a lot of panels in there. Well, this one has a lot of panels, and then this she was she's pretty advanced in her art, and again it's very manga influenced. But that's a lot of panels on each page, and I'll, this always happens, and then to be continued. But that's good. So hopefully she went and did uh, other episodes of these characters. So so what I always tell the students is don't worry about your title. I mean, because usually when I work on a comic, for the most part, over the years, I always do the cover last because then I have a better idea, like, what the whole story was about and maybe I want to emphasize a particular image on the cover. And, you know, having done the comic, I'll have a better idea. Um, same, with the, same with them. They can just um, start on, you know, here, the, the first page after they open it. And then, like I said, they can use the ruler for the panels but for the purpose of time right now, um, you know, so the, what's the key to panels? There's not a, 
I don't know. I don't think there's a real like. Well, there's no formula. That's that's for sure. It's like the first panel has to have three panels. The first page has to have three panels, and none of that. You, they just kind of how they think they need to break up their story, right? Um, and then you know, there's you know wide panels, you know, three per page, and then. Um, the problem with marker on thin paper, right? That shows up through, shows through on the other side. So if they can do their comic in pencil, or if you get, if you're able to get thicker paper like cardstock, um, or construction paper, you know, but something like a light color but thick, that would not be bad. Especially if they're going to color it later with markers and crayons and and such. Um, here's a, here's one little quick, interesting thing. So, like. I'm going to do three panels, but the third one does not have to actually be, you know, a panel, a box. Let's just say for the sake of this, the end of this story was Moose Ghost and um, Taco Dave were walking to the park and they ended up seeing a monster. Moose Ghost scared itself to life <laughs> and Taco Dave... All his uh, fillings, his cheese and his lettuce, and <laughs> is like flying out of him there. Um, and what do they see? Well, I'm not going to draw a panel. I'm just going to draw the image. So I think this is yeah. This should be coming up here. So here's uh the back of Moose Ghost, and then the back of Taco Dave. So you don't see their faces because this is their backs. Here's all the stuff lined up. And what they're seeing is. Um, I don't know, that's the park, so here's the lake. And coming out of the lake... And you could even have the, the drawing, the character, it's, it's a monster, hidden behind some of the panels up here. And then here's its eyes. How many eyes? It's a monster, it could have as many eyes as we want to give it, right? And the monster is... So, you, you know, putting some water splashes as it's rising out of that lake. It's a tiny lake. Look how big that monster is. And no one's ever seen it before. Um, you know, what's he saying? Hey, told you to stay at home. So <laughs> if you want to be a topical about it. So, of course, I ran out of page here. This is to be continued. Dun, dun, dun. And then, of course, the cover, you know, just like we talked about on this little mini comic here, you know, title. Title doesn't always have to be on the top. But it's nice to just have it, you know, screaming up there as the whole world can see it. And then whatever image they want to pick. And then, of course, let's do the most important part first. Let's put our credit down here. And there's my alarm. Look at that. The 20 minute, the 20 minute comic clinic. Um, and then the picture. I don't know what this character is here. And there we go. <laughs> but um, there we go. So again, just a just a starter because you know, maybe you don't know anything about comics as a parent, an adult, whatever, and the kid wants to make some. So hopefully, you know, these little pointers should help get you started like I said I've been doing comics forever now and teaching them for a super long time and um yeah these techniques I use in the classes and th once in a while in a rare time I've had a student you know I can't think of anything mister and you know sometimes it depends where I'm teaching like maybe the student was assigned to that comic class not so much they wanted to take it so you got to work a little harder but um, if you got a creative uh, kid there with you and they want to make comics, like go through this video. You can pause it whenever, right? Screen capture something or take some notes. Uh, sit there and watch the video with them. And, you know, like I said, pause it whenever you want to. Because, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I ran through this for 20 minutes. I certainly don't expect someone to do a comic in 20 minutes. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that helps helps everybody. Except, like I said... This is kind of geared to people who actually never made comics or don't have too much experience and they want to have their, um, 
the kids that they're watching um, experience comic making. So that's it then. The 20 minute comic clinic. Not bad. Not bad at all. So thanks everybody. Um, so up here I'll put a, a little, there'll be a little link up here for episode six on um, the squiggle art and then the mini comic production. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you liked the video and uh, don't forget to click like um, and share it, right? Definitely share it around. Um, people nowadays, you know, in this environment when currently, uh, you know, the big thing, one of the big things is um, activities for people to do, creative activities, you know, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm an instructor, so I, I do miss being in the class and I know, I know a lot of people are looking for things for their uh, kids to do so hopefully this is helpful so thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, i'll be doing more of these let's make comics sessions you know in the future in addition to the other things i'm doing so thanks thanks very much we'll see you guys again bye bye